everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And today I am working some more on my Drama Queen junk journal. And today what I'd like to do is to work on one of the signature covers. I always like to decorate the signature covers before I put in, you know, all the pages and everything. And this one is wallpaper and I really like the way, uh, you know, the pattern on this looks because it's kind of art deco. There, there you can see a little bit better. Uh, and um, I didn't want to leave the inside just plain. So what I've done to start off with is I inked around all the edges with some vintage photo. And then I took some pages from uh, a, a book of Shakespeare plays and tore them up and just kind of collage them on in right angles to each other just to give sort of a background and then i put a couple of coats of bob podge on here so now i'm ready to do some more uh playing with this and what i thought i would do first is to um give it a little bit of a spray with some of this uh, mica spray and this is antique bronze it's by distress and I had done, oh, let's see, you got to get a little higher there. I just want to give it kind of a little bit of a background and um, some shine. So, see, now that I've got that on there, and I'm going to use some other spray inks as well, just to give some uh, splatter and uh, just kind of dress up the the book page on here but since this section is going to be kind of themed for stage and theater that's why i use the uh, book pages from the shakespeare and i'm just going to dry this for a minute okay and now i would like to splatter on a couple more colors so i'm going to use uh, broken china spray stain and uh, picked raspberry spray stain just to give it a little bit of uh, different color in here so I'm gonna I already have a little bit in here I'm gonna spray some more just inside this little cup and put some on my little splatter brush here I could add some water to I'm gonna uh, put most of the the blue on this side and the reason why will become apparent in a little while I've already kind of laid out what I want to do as far as uh, collage So as I was saying, a friend of mine gave me a, a big book. It was the, uh, the Complete Works of Shakespeare. And the pages are really nice and they're nice and thin and have a kind of a neat texture to them. So I thought they would be the perfect addition. So by the way, this is something that you can do to, um, if you have like some scrapbook paper that it only has uh, the, the printing on one side, you can turn it over and collage on the back this way and just give it, uh, you know, some more, some more dimension, I guess. And then I'm also going to add some picked raspberry. Now, if you don't want to make a mess of your fingers, it's a good idea to wear gloves, but I kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, I just like being able to get my fingers all grungy. Kind of re reminds me of when I was a kid and I used to do finger painting. And those are good times. Okay, put that 
aside. And grab a baby wipe. Get some of it off my fingers anyway. Like maybe this is why they call it picked raspberry. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a dry before I go on to the next step. Okay, next I want to take um, some stencils and up here in this corner, I'm going to use this stencil with some picked raspberry and then I'm gonna go over it with seedless preserves, which is this purple one here. Oh, of course it would help if I put the, <laughs> the pad on there. I'm just gonna do this in the corner. I don't typically use printables, although I have when I have needed them for specific um, specific themes. Like I, I did a motorcycle journal one time for a friend and I needed some motorcycle images and I really didn't have anything that fit that and I wanted it to be kind of vintage. So I did um, buy a kit for motorcycle images and then I did a steampunk too and I needed some images for that. But typically I am more of a book page girl. I wanna find my own images and cut them out. I don't mind fussy cutting and I kinda of like the, you know, the thrill of the hunt, <laughs> I guess. Okay, I like that. Oh, and then the salty ocean I already have on a um, spool. So I'm going to use the same stencil over here on this side. everybody's having a good day. Daylight savings time has begun. Thank goodness it's my favorite. I really like it when the days are a little bit longer um, and it's a little bit lighter outside. There we go. I like that. Okay and even though it's been kind of rainy uh, and windy we have managed to go out for some walks so I've been pretty happy about that. Okay, now before I get started collaging on this, I am going to uh, sew some lace. And again, being a drama queen, we need to have something with a little sparkle. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lace on, you know, a border of lace on both edges. And for me, I don't mind if the lace kind of sticks out from the edge, the front edge of the book when it's closed because I to me I like the way that looks I really think that gives a little bit of added dimension um, so I'm gonna run over to my sewing machine and I will be right, right back so I have the the lace all sewn on both both sides and I used a zigzag stitch and I just used some gold stitching so now the next step is to add this um, this lace and it looks like it's got some little you know sequins tiny little sequins or something like that sewn on them and I think this is just super pretty and this one is gonna go on this edge but only on this edge I'm not gonna put it on the other edge and uh, you'll see why when I get it all on here but what I would like to do is just oh my goodness where'd that big glue blob come from okay so I'm just gonna glue this on here this is Fabri-Tac. I don't want another line of stitching and I didn't want to stitch over the top of it because I didn't want to cover up any of those pretty red and green, um, I don't know what they are. They look like tiny little sequins or something. But they're sparkly and you know this is after all a drama queen <laughs> journal. Like all the sparkle that this is bringing uh, to the journal. 
And now I have this beautiful lady that I cut out of a, a very old um, Butterick magazine. Can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. And this, I don't know where I got this. I cannot remember now. I, I do remember coloring it with distress crayons because it was all in black and white, but I don't remember which of my books it came out of. Okay, so I want to put her right here kind of behind these roses and then the roses will butt up against that lace. So for this I'm going to use art glitter glue. I better hurry up and get her fan down. The handle's going to break off. Oh, the uh, the old Butterick book that I got out of the, that I got this uh, lady from is called The Delineator, and it is um, I think like 18, 18 something as far as vintage, very old, lots of pretty images in it. This is drying really fast. Gotta get it down. <laughs> may actually have come out of the same uh, publication and what I did is um, you know it's well past copyright I copied it onto um, kind of a heavier paper a matte it's like a presentation paper but it's a matte finish on it and uh, I really like the way it came out and then I just colored it in with uh, some of the distress crayons. And that's why I wanted to put some of that, um, the picked raspberry and that, um, the seedless preserves, those colors on uh, back here because I thought that was really pretty with this, with these roses. Okay, so this very fashionable lady is ready to go to the theater. What about on this side? Well, do you remember playing dress up when you were a little girl? Or a little boy, if you, you know, little boys play dress up too. I found this um, in a book that I have. It's a Norman Rockwell book, and so I cut her out because I thought she was so adorable. And look, she's looking into her mirror kind of playing dress up and um, so I'm going to finish fussy cutting her out and and get her on here as well but I also want to put this uh, this picture kind of behind then with some opera glasses and then another little surprise at the end oh and then a ticket for the Ritz theater so let's get the ticket on first. I kind of have an order of how these need to go on. <laughs> so let's get the ticket on first. And I think I want to just ink the edges a little bit just to get rid of some of that white core. Kind of get some placement here. And this picture, I, um, the same friend that <laughs> has been giving me so many beautiful old books, uh, the Shakespeare book included, uh, gave me a book on like the history of Harrods department store in England. And um, it's just, it's so cool. It's got so many beautiful images in it. And uh, so I've just uh, confiscated some of them for this. And this is like the inside of Harrods like where you might go to buy your outfit if you were getting ready to go to the theater. I don't know if you can see that beautiful uh, winding staircase and anyway just gorgeous. And then this uh, 
these opera glasses came from there too. And this is why I prefer using book pages over printables and they certainly have their place printables and I I do really like some of the ones that I've seen but I just love being able to collage with images that I find on my own so I'm just gonna finish fussy cutting her out little detail work. I could just leave this part here, you know, not worry about cutting out this little section, but I always like to see the background behind the image. So I just uh, use my little exacto knife, almost like a pencil. Are these called shovel mirrors? C-H-E-V-A-L. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. If you know the correct pronunciation, can you leave me a, a note in the comments? Is it cheval or shovel? It's one of those little stand-up mirrors. There, that worked out pretty well. And then I also have this image. This came out of the Herod's book too. And this lady is what I think she sees in her mind's eye when she looks in the mirror. So she's going to be on the other side of the mirror. Okay, so I'm ready to glue these on here now. Starting with the mirror. Okay, let's just get her little alter ego on there. Okay, I am absolutely loving this, but I think there needs to be a finishing touch. I have my Dymo labeler, and so I'm just going to add a little sentiment. S O. Roll that out. Cut it off. I'm using gold tape in here can order it. Now I got the um, uh, the labeler at the thrift store and then my husband ordered the, the tape for me. It comes in different colors. Okay, G L A M O R O That is one of the things with this uh, <laughs> labeler is that you do know you do need to know how to spell. So I'm just going to put this uh, down on the bottom. It's going to spell so glamorous. So here's the thing with um, di these Dymo labelers: you do not want to use Fabri-Tac, and the reason why is even though they have sticky on them, you. I think you need to add a little bit of glue, but you don't want to use Fabri-Tac because Fabri-Tac has acetone in it and acetone will melt the lettering. They're the paint on the lettering, whatever it is that they use to, to color it. It will not survive. And I know this because I've done it. <laughs> so use some sort of a non-acetone based glue like our glitter glue, for example. Okay, I really love the way that is turning out. So I'm gonna call this done. I really like it. And I can't wait to do more and get this, uh, this journal more underway. I'm having more fun with it the more I work on it. Do a little bit of a trim here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. And um, always, always let the serendipity find you. Happy crafting, everybody. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.